All right, this is number uh, 31 in continuation from the last five or so um, that I did from the blog post of 50 differential equations. Um, and you'll notice that in none of the previous ones did we really need the method of undetermined coefficients. We can simply solve it by um, finding the roots of the characteristic equation. Um, the same goes for here, only now we have a slightly different case. So in the previous video I mentioned testing a quadratic if it's going to be real, imaginary, or not. It can be neither, as we'll see here. Or, or um, it can be neither of those simple cases where we test the discriminant. So in the quadratic equation, we have the square root of b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant here is negative. We're going to have imaginary solutions and so on. Here, b squared 4 minus 4ac, 4 is 0. So the radical term goes away, and we get b plus or minus 0 over 2. It is our solution in the quadratic equation, minus b. Um, so with that being the case, um, we notice that this is going, since the discriminant is exactly zero, um, this particular case is going to be a perfect square. Or you can identify that right away. So, yep, I switched colors because my other marker was dying, as they're known to do. Um, that's not going to be right. So um, in the same way, we take the coefficient in front of y double prime and place that in front of r squared, which is 1. We place the coefficient in front of y prime in front of r, and the coefficient in front of y in front of a constant, and that is the constant 1. By forming the characteristic equation and finding the roots, um, we can do, um, well, we can find the solution from the differential equation. And make sure to uh, reference my previous video on the other ones, um, and just the first one would suffice just to show um, how we do that the first three minutes of the video or so. Um, so we can now recognize this. Uh, it, we know the discriminant is zero, so this is a perfect square. But we can also note that from just factoring it, r minus 1 squared. So r really equals 1. Um, that's our only solution. Uh, and it's with um, second order degeneracy. It, it is squared. So there are two r equals 1 solutions. So what we do from this, and this is just by rule. Um, you can go through and prove it, but it's more reasonable to just... Um, use this formula, we take this solution is then for um, quadratic characteristic equations. It's equal to a constant times e to the whatever this value is. So we'll say, we'll just call it a for now, t plus b. But now we can't do another one. We can't do e to the a t b t, for example, um, because there is no b. The solution is only one. We can't add the same one, or we could combine these constants and only have one solution. But we're promised two independent solutions um, in this case. So what we do instead is we just stick a t in front. And by the chain rule, that does work. So by adding one power of t, and I believe if you have a third order, for example, you would then add another term with t squared. Um, I think that's what happens at, after that. But we only have the second order equations here, so we can take a t in front of it, new constant a, and then and now b, um, and stick that in front. And then we have the same one. So plugging um, our value of a, which is 1, the root of the characteristic equation, we have y of t is equal to a e to the t plus b t e to the t. Um, now I figure it might be practical to just check this real quick and to see that it works and why it works, why plugging a t in there works. So this is y of t. When you want to plug something into a differential equation, first solve for the derivative and second derivative, and then plug it in. First derivative is a e to the t. This doesn't change. Plus, all right, so there is one portion of the product rule. Here's the other. So we'll take the derivative of the first one times the second plus the first bt times the derivative of the second, which doesn't change. Um, so, eh, I'll just keep it in that form. y double prime, it's now the derivative of this, this still doesn't change, that doesn't change, and now here we have the same thing. If you'll note, this term was the same as this term. So the derivative of this term is right here, just like it was back here. So now we have plus b e to the t plus b t e to the t. Now we already have a b e to the t here, so I'm just going to make a 2 for that, and then plus b t e to the t. Okay, um, so plugging this in, we take uh, a single y double prime, um, 
a e to the t plus 2b e to the t plus b t e to the t. Now we subtract 2y primes. So we can see that we're going to have minus 2a e to the t minus 2b e to the t. So that cancels this one. Minus 2b t e to the t. Minus 2b e to the t makes this from plus to a minus. And then plus y. a e to the t um, and then minus 2a e to the t and now plus y. So we did the first two here and then adding y. So uh, simplifying this first part, it is minus a e to the t minus b t e to the t plus y. Does that equal zero? Yes, because that is the same there and that is the same. So it does equal zero. It does solve this uh, equation correctly, um, but our rule of thumb is just placing a t in front of the second one. Um, for the product rule to take effect and to make that second solution work. So that's uh, number 31 and our solution is right here. Okay, um, 32, let's see, that is the same business, only now we have an initial value problem. I'm going to keep switching colors around, we'll find a good marker. 32. All right, we also have my notation y naught is y at time zero is equal to two, and y prime at time zero is equal to negative one. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, the same thing um, as our other ones, we're gonna form the uh, characteristic equation, but here it's really nice. Like I did before, I'm gonna divide by this nine. Um, to make it cleaner. When you divide by this leading coefficient, it's easier to check if it can be factored. So 12 over 9 y prime plus 4 over 9 y equals 0. Um, so we can simplify this one here to 6. Um, well, now let's go 4 thirds. Uh, 12 nines dividing each by 3. Now, if you're really keen and you know your, you know your uh, square, uh, quadratics, we can see that this, don't forget to actually make the characteristic equation, I do that all the time, uh, that this is actually a perfect square because the middle term is, um, if you um, square minus half of this, you get this. What I mean by that is, if you square half of this middle term, you get the last term. That's how we know that it's a perfect square. Squaring half of this, two-thirds, gives four-ninths. So this is a perfect square, and you can verify that if you want. Um, but our term in here is half the middle term and the square root of the last term. If it's both of those at the same time, then it is a perfect square. Um, so that's great. We have that equals zero, and per number 31 um, on our last one, we can write the final solution to that as a e to the, now we take that root, that root is positive two-thirds to satisfy this equation. So we take positive two-thirds up here times t, and now plus b, and now our other independent, linearly independent solution is multiplied by t, two-thirds t. Okay, so this is our um, generic solution. Now we need to um, implement the boundary conditions. So at time equals zero, we have the solution is equal to two. So plugging in t equals zero, this whole term goes away because of this t, and this exponential becomes mm, one, excuse me. So we have a is equal to y naught, which is two. So that was a pretty straightforward solution. We have a equals two, which magically appeared here because my video cut out. Yeah. Now, our next one is taking the derivative at time equals zero. So we'll take the derivative, um, y prime of t, is equal to two-thirds a e to the two-thirds t. And now using a product rule here, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is brings down a two-thirds, times the first. Okay. Yeah. Now if we plug in uh, t equals zero here, 
this whole term vanishes like before because of this t here and these exponentials become 1. Now y prime at 0 is equal to negative 1 and that equals 2 thirds times a which we already know to be 2 so we'll just plug that in right away save the time plus b so b is equal to minus 3 thirds which is this minus 4 thirds that is minus 7 thirds so our final solution plugging these in for our initial one um, is equal to 2 thirds that's not right, 2, um, e to the 2 thirds t, and now minus 7 thirds, which is b, e um, times t times e to the 2 thirds t. And that is our final solution with the boundary conditions. And my marker is going to die. Um, okay, great. So that's number 32. Um, we'll do one more of this sort, which is pretty straightforward, number 33. Then we're going to um, jump to two others uh, to which I was assigned later on in the uh, problem. So let's try a black marker. 33. Um, so same thing here. We got a list of these uh, problems like this. Uh, y prime plus 9y equals 0. So if we form the characteristic equation in the same way as on the other ones, uh, your most detailed example of that will be on my previous video, the first two minutes or so. You'll see that in detail. Um, okay, so this is our characteristic equation. Always remember there's no r or anything in front, even though there was a y back there, because it's the zero order derivative. So it's r to the zero, which is one. Um, okay, so we do the same thing here, and we can hopefully identify this as a perfect square. If not, b squared minus 4ac is 36 minus 36, which is 0, so there's no discriminant. r minus 3 squared is 0. This is minus, because that's minus. So, um, we have y, or I'm uh, sorry, r really equals 3 with the degeneracy. So, per our previous problem, um, our form for that is a e to the 3t. Since this is 3 plus b, and then to form our other solution, we throw in a t, because why not? And now using our initial conditions, which I failed to write down, y of 0 equals 0, and y prime of 0 equals 2. Um, using these conditions, plugging in 0 of y, this term goes away, that exponential goes away, we find that a equals 0. a equals y at 0. And so uh, that nixes that term permanently. So now we can rewrite y of t is equal to this. b t e to the 3t, that is. <laughs> Don't you love expos? Um, okay, great. So we've removed this term, but now we need to solve for b. So, um, going to pink, we're going to find the derivative of this, because at, at 0 it's equal to 2. So 2 equals the derivative of this. Uh, we'll take it in those chunks, so derivative of the first times the second, <clears throat> plus the derivative of the second times the first. And that's equal to 2, um, but we plug in at 0 still, y at 0. That still goes away. y at 0 here makes this 1, so we easily find that b equals 2. So our final solution is um, relatively straightforward. y equals b times t to the e, or e, 3t, and we have um, a equals 0 from our um, previous finding. So this is our uh, specific solution with those boundary conditions. All right, um, my next ones will be on a separate video, and those numbers, for your reference, are 45, piecewise function, and 48, um, a Laplace transform problem.